MDTV Medical News Now is an informational program only and cannot be construed as medical advice. The guests on the program are not actors and are not paid for their appearance. This program may be deemed medically graphic, so viewer discretion is advised. What are the ingredients of a good dental practice? The first things that come to mind are a helpful and pleasant staff, a nice office, and of course a talented and personable dentist. So what then separates a good practice from a great practice? Take the ingredients I just mentioned and add an unquenchable thirst for excellence. The dentists that change the way things are done are the ones who never stop learning and teaching. The dentists who invest in the technology that truly helps the patient rather than just looking impressive. Who are these dentists who push the envelope to give their patients the best care? And why do they do it? Well, stay with us. MDTV Medical News Now is next. I'm Pat Murphy Stark. Welcome to MDTV Medical News Now, a program dedicated to bringing you leaders in the field of healthcare that are in your hometown. Our show strives to give you the latest information on new techniques and treatments in the field of medicine and dentistry. Joining us now is Dr. Walter Kostreski. Dr. Kostreski is a member of the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry and serves as an advisory board member for the Generation Next Continuing Education Group. He has also served as a clinical faculty member for the Pacific Aesthetic Continuum and the prestigious Hornbrook Group. Doctor, welcome to the program. I bet. Now, we've seen the level of craftsmanship that's involved at the, the uh, lab. Why do you think that good communication between the dentist and that lab is so very important? Well, undoubtedly, good communication with the lab is, is needed. The lab's sitting there with a stone model of the patient's teeth. They can't see the patient's face. They don't know what the patient wants. It's very important for the dentist to be able to provide pictures of the patient, of what they look like now, pictures of what they want to look like, um, so they can really get a feel for the patient and they can custom craft a, a smile for the patient. I think um, most importantly, as, I get a, as an educator of cosmetic dentistry, a lot of students will ask me, it's always a question they ask is, hey, Dr. K, what lab do you, do you use? Mm -hmm. Where do you send your work? And it, it's more than that. It's not just where you send it, but it's a communication with your ceramist and just um, knowledge of the techniques and materials yourself that will get you that perfect result. Yeah, I mean, because it really is a work of art. I mean, you could look at teeth outside of a mouth and put them in the mouth and they would look very different. Uh, totally different. So, yeah, so I guess you really have to communicate that whole image and vision for that patient, for the lab. Definitely. Now, who is a good candidate for veneers? Are they good for anybody? Well, it's easy to say that anybody that wants a better smile or feels like their teeth could be whiter or straighter is definitely a candidate for cosmetic dentistry. Um, and it's more than just veneers. It's hard to just say shop dentist to dentist, you know, I want veneers. It's more, I want a better smile, and what are my options? Yeah, because every individual case is probably different, and sometimes it might be several things to get to that end result. Right. Now, how many visits would be needed? Let's say if somebody just does need the veneers mm -hmm. on, say, the top 10 teeth mm -hmm. where you see them when sure. you smile. Uh, you know, is it very involved? Well, basically for the patient, it's two visits, but there's a lot more than that. I mean, there's a lot that goes into pre-planning the case, and then it's important for the patient to follow up when they finish the case. Um, as far as the two visits are concerned, in, in our office, we offer sedation dentistry, where it makes it a lot easier for the patient to sit there for the four to six hours that it's going to take. Because that will be one of the things the patients will say, well, how long is it going to take? Two visits isn't bad. But then when they find out it's two visits of three to six hours, depending on what they need, they're like, wow. And, uh, you know, if you were getting your tonsils out, you wouldn't even dream of getting your tonsils out without anesthesia. Right. And the sedation dentistry allows a patient to be nice and relaxed mm -hmm. and not even remember they had it done and they wake up with a beautiful smile the next day. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a bad deal. Yeah. Now, um, as far as the expense, I'm mm -hmm. sure some people probably just don't even consider something like this because they assume that it's unreachable. Is it expensive? And if so, is there financing or any options like that? Yeah, I think unfortunately so many people don't get done what they really want done because they think it's going to be expensive, right. but they don't know. 
And with today's techniques and materials in cosmetic dentistry, it's really affordable for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, dentistry as, as a whole has put vehicles in place where patients can afford to get dentistry they want or um, finance it. Uh, in our office, a patient will meet with a patient care coordinator who will sit down with them and go over their specific treatment plan and help that patient find a way to make it fit in their budget so they can get what they want. Right, right. Well, let's move on to crowns. Mm -hmm. They've evolved somewhat over the years. Are they really better today than they used to be? Beautifully. I mean, in the, in the past where you had to use metal to strengthen a crown uh, and put porcelain over it, the tooth really didn't, it didn't look natural. And then when we got to all porcelain crowns, it would be just too opaque. And the materials we have today, they're just, we can recreate what nature put there. So it will really look like when you're done that it just blends right in with the other teeth? Nobody should ever leave the dentist and have their friends say, wow, those are beautiful crowns you got. Mm -hmm. I mean, they should just say, geez, you got a great smile. And the person will just snicker like, yeah, well, Dr. King made it. And, you know, I don't want them to tell people that. I just... I'm complimented by the fact that people say, hey, you got a great smile. Right, exactly. You don't have to tell. It's our secret. Yes, so it's the absence of the old metals and the right. new materials that are tooth colored. Right. Cosmetic okay. dentistry should look like nothing's ever been done. Right, right. What has changed uh, with bridges over the years? Are they still something that's used? Right. The funny thing about bridges is I play hockey and coach hockey and uh, people, when they find out that I'm a dentist and I'm playing hockey, they say, oh, you're just here looking for business, looking for a few knocked out teeth. <laughs> oh, you know, and bridges used to look like bridges. I mean, like something was done. I mean, yeah. you don't have a space anymore, but just ugly, not attractive smile. Mm -hmm. And bridges as well now we can do without ever knowing something's there. Great. And how do they compare to, say, a denture or an implant? Even people with dentures can have a smile design done. I mean, people may think, I don't have any teeth, so I just got these teeth in here. But, you know, dentures are smile designs as well. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody out there seems to be wanting to whiten their teeth lately. You right. You're bombarded with it on the media, and it right. sounds like a good idea because who doesn't want whiter teeth? But right. how do you determine what is right for you? Because there's laser sure. bleaching, there's the gel and tray, and even the veneers can be made whiter. How do you right. decide? I think the worst thing with all the media blitz on the whitening is patients who spend a lot of money they don't have to. Mm -hmm. And you got the tray whitening at the dentist and people will think, oh, well, that's expensive. Um, the laser whitening has got to even be more expensive. Uh, what's expensive is going out and self-diagnosing and buying materials over the counter, which are really going to take more time to whiten than if you have it done right the first time. Right. With tray whitening, you know, in three or four days you can have the teeth as white as you want. Some people just want instant gratification and they want to do the laser whitening and we can get them a white smile in a day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and then other people want to try and find a quick fix that in the long run is going to cost them more. Right, right. So if you go for the laser whitening, it's immediate results, instant gratification. Yeah, it's instant gratification. That's for the <laughs> right. people that, like, I can't wear these trays. I just want white teeth yes, now. Right. And but if you are somebody that <laughs> is willing to wear the tray every night and right. do it, then that's fine, too. And I would assume if you have the tray at home, and let's say you get to the whiteness that you want a little later on, maybe a month or right. two down the road, if you've got your tray and your thing, you could do a touch-up. That's then. the best part about the tray whitening is you can continue to touch up right. throughout your life. Right. Now, um, the patient and doctor relationship is obviously an important one for the outcome of any medical or dental procedure. What would you say that a patient needs to look for in a dentist to make sure that they build a really solid foundation of trust and a good relationship for the proper outcome? Personal relationships, the key are personal relationships. If you can find a dentist that you can speak to, that you can sit down at the table and really be able to talk to them is very important. But even more important than that, I think, is not just smiling faces on the wall, but if that dentist has a team around them that's happy and smiling and they like to be there, you know you're going to get what you want done. Right, right. And obviously technology changes so quickly. Mm -hmm. Should a patient really always be looking for a dentist who is constantly learning? In, continuing education is of utmost importance. If you have a dentist that's just not into new technology, some, uh, some technology is good, some technology may be overkill, but finding that dentist that's continually trying to learn and find out more information about things, that's the person that's going to be on the cutting edge and give you the best treatment. Great. Doctor, thank you very much. Thank you.